Yes. Boleh. Good afternoon. Oh, God. Good morning, class. All right, we'll be going into our lecture 14 today, where we will be talking about this topic 9, carbonyl compound. Not much left. We'll be going into carboxylic acid next week. And then we have your amine for another week. Then saya akan combine amino acid and polymer for one more week. And then hopefully we can squeeze in some time for a bit of revision. We will see. Okay? And uh, so not much. I think there is only four more topic left. Carboxylic acid, amine, amino acid, polymer. All right. Time flies. So carbonyl compound over here. The first thing, when you heard of the word carbonyl compound, what comes into your mind? Aldehyde ketone. Selain daripada tu? C double bond O. Your C double bond O should be the first thing that comes into your mind when you heard of the word carbonyl compound. You guys are very yellowish today. And did anybody say any any complaint? Anybody lodge any complaint? Did your lecturer say anything? Or is it just me? All right, we have fixed this thing. I, I don't like it. Just don't like it. It's not good for your eyes. All right. So uh, the very first thing that you should come into your mind is your C double bond O. And like your friends say, carbonyl group. Okay. So the general formula adalah CNH2NO. Kenapa adalah CNH2N kat sini? Sebab kita akan bermain dengan double bond O. Dia akan menggunakan formula alkin. Dia akan guna formula alkin. Contoh C4H8O. Kenapa guna formula alkin? Sebab kehadiran double bond. Alright. Okay. Kenapa kita guna formula alkin? Kenapa adalah CNH2N? Sebab kita ada kehadiran double bond O di situ. Okay, simple. Next, like you say, aldehyde ketone. What makes your aldehyde ketone different? What makes your aldehyde ketone different from each other? The position of the C double bond O. So, for the aldehyde, where should your C double bond O located? Hujung. Carbon number? Satu. Alright, kiri kanan atas bawah. Kanan, oh mesti kena duduk kanan baru jadi carbon nombor satu. Alright, so it doesn't really matter where is your C double bond O located as in. Dia tak kisah kiri kanan atas bawah. What class? Come in, come in, come in, quick. Sit in the front, fast. Class apa tadi? So you must be very good, right? You spend so much time on your English class. Have you got your muat? Got the result? Any band six? What is band six, Miss Wong? Band five? Wow. Band four? Ah, I'm only at your level. I take Muet twice and I got banned for twice. And I hate Muet for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, we are not shopping. Tak payah pilih. You are not at the bubble tea shop. Just get a seat and sit. Just sit down, please. You are disturbing my class. Please. Thank you. All right. So what makes your aldehyde ketone different adalah selalu budak akan kata uh, aldehyde C double bond O kena duduk kiri, kanan, atas, bawah. No. I have a better option for you. Dia kena duduk hujung. Alright. Bila saya kata dia duduk hujung, dia tak semestinya duduk kiri, kanan. Dia boleh duduk di atas hujung. Dan it could be something like this. Dan dia tetap adalah hujung. And if my hujung carbon is the carbon that holding double bond O right now completed. No, what else is missing? H. And what makes your aldehyde different from your ketone? You realize that for your aldehyde, your carbon that holding C double bond O mesti kena pegang H. I say mesti. 
So the C double bond O, the same carbon, must be holding hydrogen. Vice versa with the ketone, okay? Your C double bond O kena duduk tengah. Bila kita kata tengah, I have a better option. It must be sitting in between carbon. Dia kena duduk antara carbon. Okay, dia kena duduk antara carbon tak kisah berapa carbon. Tapi dia kena duduk antara carbon. So, in the other words, your ketone, your C double bond O must be sitting next to the carbon. And do you realize we have any hydrogen? No. So, cara yang paling senang nak check adalah tengok pada carbon double bond O, carbon yang sama pegang hydrogen tak. Kalau carbon tu pegang hydrogen, dia aldehyde. Kalau carbon tu tak pegang hydrogen, dia ketone. Dan cara saya hafal when I was a student, aldehyde, ada H kan? So dia kena pegang H. Ketone, O duduk tengah. Betul? So O kena duduk tengah. I, I wasn't a good student and I wasn't bright as you. So that is my stupid way. And I succeed by the way. Alright? So, yes, I use that way. So, kalau siapa-siapa yang confused, you can use that way if you think it's good enough. But just make sure, saya selalu akan check hydrogen. Saya tak akan check carbon sebab panjang. Banyak. Pening. So, saya akan cari carbon yang pegang double bond O. Kalau carbon yang sama pegang H, dia aldehyde. Kalau carbon tu tak pegang H, dia ketone. Okay? Easy lah. Next, going to naming. Naming kita nak bincang sikit. Sebab naming kat sini akan lain. Bila kita ada naming untuk aldehyde ketone, alright, going back to your aldehyde, Kalau aldehyde, standard, if I have a three carbon, standard dia adalah propane. So propane is a CH3, CH2, CH3. Tapi kalau dia adalah tiga carbon pegang double bond O, what happened to the name? Propanal, the E will then change to AL, betul? So over here, the three carbon will become propanal. And my question, do we need to give position? Why not? For the aldehyde, only one thing different from the aldehyde compared to your alcohol and ketone. Alcohol selalu kita akan letak two butanol, betul? One butanol, three pentanol, uh, two hexanol. Kita kena letak position sebab OH boleh berubah tempat. Sama juga kat ketone nanti. Ketone pun kita kena letak position sebab dia boleh berubah tempat. Double bond O duduk tengah. Dia boleh tengah kat carbon nombor dua, dia boleh tengah kat carbon nombor empat, betul? Depends on the question. Tapi kalau aldehyde, dia boleh ubah tempat. Dan dia mesti duduk carbon hujung. And carbon hujung tu mesti jadi carbon nombor satu. Therefore, the good thing about aldehyde, do we need to give position? No. Bila kita kata propanal, dia mesti adalah carbon nombor satu pegang C double bond. Oh, bila kita kata hexanal, six carbon, carbon nombor satu pegang double bond. Oh. Tak perlu letak nombor dan jangan letak. Okay? Different from your ketone, alright, to make your ketone slightly easier over here, I have a five carbon. So I have my CH3, I have my CH2. What would be the name of this? Yang atas. Yang atas apa nama rasa-rasa? Alright, five carbon. So kalau ketone, kita akan ganti E tersebut kepada O and E. So lima carbon standard adalah pentane. So dia akan jadi pentanone. And look at both, up and down. Both adalah pentanone, betul? How to make it different? Numbering, okay? And for the top, we will count from the Y. Alright, untuk ketone yang atas, five carbon yang atas, we can count from the left and right because both will give you the position three. But untuk yang bawah, left. So that, so that the C double bond O get the lowest number. The rules always apply the same way. Functional group kena dapat nombor terendah. The end of the story. So to make it different over here, the name for the top will be three pentanone. That makes it different from the aldehyde. Yang bawah akan jadi 2 pentanone. Therefore, the main difference between aldehyde ketone. Aldehyde, no numbering is needed because they definitely deserve carbon number 1. Tapi ketone, the position can change. So, you kena bagi nombor. Faham? Okay. Uh, naming saya rasa 
AL kepada ONE tak ada masalah lah. Yang tu. Okay. Question. No. No question. Uh, standard. Seperti yang kita cakap, the longest carbon chain must hold the C double bond O. The C double bond O group must have the lowest possible number as always. Question. What would be your longest carbon chain? Alright. One. Moving, moving all the way. Betul? So, jumpa cabang. Going straight, going up or going down? Same. Betul? So, I, I don't like to go straight. Life never go the way that you want. You know? It always does. Okay? Dah gaduh dengan girlfriend, dah gaduh dengan boyfriend kan? So, it never go the way that you want. Alright? Oh, yes. Like you never get me and you thought you want to get me on the second semester and until you got me and then you were like, shit. <laughs> it doesn't go the way I want. Right? Okay. Tanyalah Azim macam mana hidup dia dengan saya semester-semester yang lepas. Uh, dalam tutorial especially. Okay. Where we are? The name. The longest carbon name over here. I have five carbons. So the name will be? Pentanal. The parent will be pentanal. And I will definitely come from the uh, carbon that holding double bond O. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Can I have the full name? Four, four, dimethyl pentanal. Senang? Okay. Senang je. Tak pernah susah. Nak dengan tanak je. Okay. Next. Saya paling kagum adalah orang yang tunjuk dengan jari tapi boleh tak menulis. Kalau saya boleh mengajar just like that, you'll hate me for the rest of your life. You know? Come on, pick up your pen and start writing ladies and gentlemen. Stop pointing to my slides or whatsoever on the screen or what is this? So rubbish. How many functional group I have on the screen? I have the present of my carbonyl and functional group, hydroxyl, who has the highest priority. Remember the list of priority that I give you during your benzene? The same list will be applied. List tu bukan bermula di benzene, bukan hanya untuk benzene. Dia bermula di chapter benzene. Alright? And a uh, kind reminder, bila kita ada double bond O dengan single bond OH, double bond O always have higher priority. So kat sini, alcohol dengan carbonyl, siapa jadi parent? What would be the name of your parent? The Chinese girl that wearing green, all green, yes, you. What is the name of your parent? As in this parent, not your parent. I don't really care what's the name of your parent. Sorry? Ah, your friend doesn't need to help you. Butanal. Agree? Yes. My question, the butanal that you mentioned, same, back to the same girl, going straight or going up? I say the same girl. Going straight. Why not going up? I'll still get butanal. Going up also can. Agree? You say butanal. I guess everybody agree with butanal, do we? So the question is, where is my butanal? Going straight or going up? Why? Because we want to have the longest carbon chain with the most substituent. Betul? Pick up your pen and start writing those. Okay? Uh, tak ada option. Saya jarang, naming jarang ada option. Alright? Dia jarang ada dua nama yang betul. Sangat-sangat jarang. Ada sometimes. Alright? Sangat-sangat jarang. 
kat sini we will definitely going straight. Kenapa kita going straight? Because going straight will give you two substitute. Dua kumpulan yang saya tak highlight. Tapi kalau kita going up, dia akan ada satu kumpulan besar yang kita tak highlight. Betul? And when we have the same longest carbon chain, what do we do? We pick the one that have more friends. Betul? Kalau jalan sama, kamu pilih yang banyak kawan ke yang tak ada kawan? Alright. Okay. So, always go for the one that have more friends. Therefore, your parent over here adalah butanal. And then, this is your carbon number one. Two, three, four. And before we move on, just a quick one. This one will be your two ethyl. Betul? This one will be your... Can I have the spelling? L or no L? L or no L? Berapa orang kata no L? Sure. Berapa orang kata L? Oh, tak ada orang nak setuju dengan saya. Okay. Uh, functional group, OH akan jadi hydroxyl. Alright, if you remember, I insist so much on the spelling previously. Kalau dia substituent, OH akan jadi hydroxy. Okay, tak ada L. And H and E, which one come first? E come first, definitely. Therefore, 2 ethyl, 3 hydroxy. Alright, butanal. Agree? Summer. What I'm trying to show you over here is all the rules that we learned previously from the same longest carbon chain to have the more substituent, from the lowest possible number to the functional group. From all that, priority list yang kita belajar kat benzene semua apply sama because we are still using the same system. Are you packed? Alright? Everybody is still using the same system. Last one. Easy one. The pilot. Okay, especially enam ni lah. Alright, especially enam ni, which is in your syllabus. Uh, I think I want to really, really pay attention is the one on the first, second and the last one. Okay, the first, second yang kita ada kat sini adalah when you have one carbon aldehyde standard, kita panggil methanol all the way. Betul? But we have one name that we call formaldehyde. Kalau siapa yang biasa beli barang uh, basuh baju ke apa-apa ke, certain ubat, certain uh, ubat takut, certain uh, spray, kamu akan nampak perkataan formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is actually your methanol. And because this name uh, is not the IUPAC name, it's the general name, but because this general name is being widely used, therefore it's also accepted in uh, IUPAC system. So kalau soalan exam kata formaldehyde, you should know it's a one carbon aldehyde. Another one adalah acyl dehyde. Okay. Acyl dehyde is actually your ethanol. Acyl dehyde is actually your ethanol. Sama juga. Uh, one carbon, two carbon. 
Dua ni adalah antara yang kamu kena tahu lah. Alright, dua ni adalah antara yang kamu kena tahu. Okay? Dah? Next. Uh, propana, propinol aldehyde. Tak ada apa. Yang ni sebab, saya rasa tak ada apa sebab kamu boleh teka. So, saya tak rasa ada apa. Butal aldehyde pun sama. Kamu boleh teka. So, saya tak rasa isu sangat-sangat kamu boleh teka. Kamu boleh nampak daripada nama tu. Cuma formaldehyde dengan asit asitaldehyde yang tu memang kamu kena tahu. Formaldehyde is one carbon, acetaldehyde is two carbon. Okay. And next, realize this. Benzaldehyde that we learned in your benzene ring. Okay. Yang ni standard lah. Uh, benzaldehyde, we will always use benzaldehyde. Kita sangat jarang guna phenyl methanol, sangat sarang, sangat sangat jarang guna uh, benzyl carbaldehyde. Okay. Sangat jarang. Alright. So, uh, benzaldehyde, you should know lah. Okay. Next. Second last yang saya tak highlight lagi. Cyclohexane carbaldehyde. Nama penuh dia adalah cyclohexane carbaldehyde. Saya salah type ni. Okay. Nama dia akan jadi cyclo. Dia akan jadi macam ni tau. Benzene carbaldehyde. Apa maksud dia? The aldehyde group, the one carbon aldehyde group directly attached to the benzene ring. So dia akan jadi the name of the ring. And then tambah kat belakang carbaldehyde. Itu maksud saya. Okay. Bermakna kalau teacher ada cyclobutane. So dia akan jadi uh, cyclo, C double bond OH. Dia akan jadi cyclobutane, carbaldehyde. Betul. Itu maksud saya. Alright. Dia akan jadi the name of the cyclic tambah perkataan carbaldehyde. Carbaldehyde means cycloaldehyde. Carbaldehyde means cycloaldehyde. Sama juga kalau dalam exam, kamu tak payah bagi nama susah macam ni. Kamu bagi dia lah nama cyclobutyl methanol. Betul? It's a one carbon aldehyde, right? So it's a methanol, betul? So yang tu parent. So cyclobutyl as a substituent. Kamu bagi nama cyclobutyl methanol tak salah. Tapi kalau exam bagi nama cyclobutane carbaldehyde, kamu kena boleh lukis. Alright? Perkataan carbaldehyde, always remember. Carbaldehyde, cycloaldehyde. Okay? The aldehyde directly attached to the cyclic. Habis. Okay? Boleh? Okay. So, the three names yang saya rasa kamu kena tahu, formaldehyde, acetaldehyde and benzaldehyde. Jangan lupa yang tu. The, bukan saya kata propinal dengan uh, butyl aldehyde tu tak penting. Just kamu boleh teka kot daripada pro dengan but tu kamu nampak tiga dan empat carbon tu. Okay? So, not much a big deal over that. Alright. Uh, special name, again, tak payah guna. Tapi kalau exam keluar, kamu kena tahu. Itu je. Alright. Okay. Going for preparation of carbonyl. We learn all of that. Alright. We learn all of that. So, I won't be going uh, slow. Ada benda baru di belakang yang saya nak ajar hari ni. Tapi, uh, yang ni just a recap memory. Preparation of carbonyl, kita ada tiga. Ozonolysis. Ozonolysis, Fidercroft oscillation, oxidation of alcohol. Can I know what do we use in ozonolysis? What is your reagent condition? O3. Zinc H2O. So O3, Zn, H2O. Oh, tak pula. One Roman. Dalam bahasa, I thought your muat got band 5, man. You give me what? One Roman. What word do we use? Follow by somewhere there. Thank you. Follow by. Bila dia ada Roman 1, Roman 2, by that means it's a follow by. Ayat kamu patut, bila kamu cakap, kamu akan dengar ozonolysis. O3 follow by. Zinc in H2O. Alright. So Roman 1, uh, ozone. O3, Roman 2, Zn, H2O. That is your follow by. Betul? Fidercroft oscillation that happen only to Kita belajar benda ni kat mana? Benzene. So it only happen to benzene. Betul? Dengan kata lain, this thing will only produce aromatic carbonyl. Kenapa hanya produce aromatic carbonyl? Sebab dia hanya berlaku pada benzene. Betul? Kita belajar Fidercroft oscillation hanya pada benzene. Last but not least, Oxidation of alcohol. First question. Primary alcohol. Okay. Ingat primary alcohol ada dalam otak. Tak ingat boleh jauh-jauh sikit. 
How can I change my primary alcohol to become carbonate? Using strong oxidizing agent. Mild oxidizing agent. Strong. Strong or mild, are they? What is the example of the mild oxidizing agent? PCC in? CH2Cl2, your dichloromethane. Betul? Thank you. Secondary alcohol? Oh, tak habis lagi primary. Baru cakap mild oxidizing agent kan? So, primary alcohol react with mild oxidizing agent. Dapat apa? Aldehyde, your carbonyl. Betul? Your secondary alcohol? Dapat kita guna apa? Both. Thank you. Boleh guna dua-dua, betul? Alright, an example of strong oxidizing agent. Laki yang duduk belakang sekali hujung. One example of strong oxidizing agent. Ah, tak payah pandang kawan kamu. Kawan kamu nak kena next nanti. Lain kali duduk bawah. That's the trick. Strong oxidizing agent. You know when I will stop ask question? When you tend to sit in front and keep here, then I will stop ask question. Terminal 4 je. So, ayah masak kicap, letak kicap je lah. Yang lain diam. Terminal 4? Terminal 4 H+. Plus. So, ayah masak merah, letak ayam, letak kicap, letak bawang. Je. Lepas tu ayam tu je boleh makan. Terminal 4 H+. Plus. Plus, Camino 4 H plus. Well, yang kali wife kamu bagi ayam mentah, hang makan je tau. Hang jangan cakap banyak. It's the line je. Okay, sorry. So, your oxidation over here, one of the strong oxidizing agent that we always use, Camino 4 H plus, heat. Betul? Alright, we'll talk about that now. Ozonolysis, as we all agree, is an ozone followed by zinc uh, in water. So, you have your Roman 1, Roman 2. Can anybody tell me what happened and where is the... Changes happen at the double bond, and what happened to the double bond, guys? Break, break separa atau break semua? Break separa bermakna double bond jadi single bond. Oh, break semua pula. Okay, break semua, and then. Okay, kita akan salin balik CH three CH. Apa jadi? Carbon yang pecah tadi akan dapat double bond. Oh, satu produk atau dua produk? Tambah is another product sebab dia putus habis. Betul? And what do we produce? C double bond O. Salin balik. Dan if you look at me, alright, if you look at the way that I draw, saya tak susun balik pun. Saya salin balik exactly bentuk soalan yang dia bagi tadi. Betul? Tak payah gatai nak susun balik. Tu, tu, tu statement saya. Jangan tunjuk pandai. I know it's a straight chain. Teacher saya nak susun balik jadi straight chain. Tak payah. That's how you break it. That's how you copy. Alright? The only changes is we focus on the double bond O. Highlight your double bond O. Break the entire double bond O. Replace with double bond O. Uh, Break the entire carbon-carbon double bond, replace with double bond. Oh, the end of the story. Kimi yang senang? Boleh dapat A? Thank you. Tak ada. Boleh atau tak boleh? Tak ada statement tu. Yes or no? Yes. Dalam kelas saya tak ada, I will try. Because I don't come into my lecture and try to teach. I come in my lecture and I teach. So when you go into your exam, you don't try to answer. You go into the exam, you answer. Is that clear? All right? We work in that way. Okay. Oh, yang ni saya dah bagi jawapan. Saya lupa nak tutup. She's there. Uh, where is the bond break? Where is the bond break? Which bond break? CL. Carbon dengan CL. Lagi?
H dan H duduk kat mana? Benzene, betul? So we actually, if you remember, all the carbon on the benzene having a hydrogen. Remember that? So ikatan tu yang akan putus. Dan bila ikatan tu putus, ikatan baru akan terhasil lah. So this bond break, this bond break. The new bond form adalah sini. Agree? Okay. Next question. Saya sentiasa ada soalan walaupun saya dah bagi jawapan. What is the type of reaction? Boys, sebelah. What is the type of reaction when I have my Peter Kraft oscillation happen? Electrophilic aromatic substitution. Class, do you? Who is your electrophile? Who is your electrophile? Quick. Kenapa lah aku nak dapat Miss Wong? Sorry? Carbon mana? I have like plenty of carbon. Carbon mana? Carbon yang duduk dalam benzene ring, carbon yang duduk dalam cyclobutane, carbon CH2. Carbon C double bond O, carbon mana? Carbon C double bond O, kelas setuju? Electrophilic, uh, sorry, electrophile, positive charge or negative charge? Thank you. So your electrophilic aromatic substitution over here, your electrophile is this guy. Yang kamu akan salin balik SBJ, this is your electrophile over here. Yang akan menggantikan hydrogen. So that is your electrophilic aromatic substitution. Sayang, kita pernah belajar benda ni? Yes. Alright. So, please. Bukan benda baru. We learn this and exactly as what we learn, we bring it back over here to produce your uh, carbonyl. Okay. Next question. Pakcik, I'll dihat ke kita? Yang tu pun nak fikir ke? I'll dihat ke kita? Ha, hang. Kita macam tu kan cakap dengan girlfriend. I'm not your girlfriend. Tak payah cakap slow dengan aku. Kitun ke Aldihat? Oh, Kitun. Okay. Yelah, kadang-kadang kita message patut apa tak nak reply. Hanya apa aku nak ngorak apa ke? Just reply my stupid message. Okay. Oxidation of alcohol like we all agree just now. We are primary, secondary, tertiary of alcohol. So, just very quickly to recall your memory. When I have my primary alcohol, nampak ke? Okay. When I have my primary alcohol, I need to react with my PCC in the presence of your inert solvent to produce your aldehyde. Yang ni kita dah tahu lah. Tadi kita ada secondary alcohol dan kita akan react dengan strong atau mild. Both. Alright. The boy say both. Dan kalau both akan dapat benda yang sama. Kamu guna yang cepat ke guna yang lambat? And the boy just now say KMNO4 H plus heat. The same row, hujung another one. Pakcik. Another strong oxidizing agent? I remember I give you in one whole slide during alcohol, betul? Saya ada list, saya biasa akan list benda macam tu. Nanti kita akan belajar benda baru. Yes. Kawan kamu sebelah pun tak tahu, tak payah tanya dia. Come on, quick. K2, Cr2, O7, H+. Heat. Betul? So we have a few strong oxidizing agents. Dan kat sini saya tak nak tulis siapa dah. Saya akan tulis terus strong oxidizing agent. Okay. Kamu kena tahulah siapa strong oxidizing agent kamu. Dan kita akan dapat ketot. Next question kawan sebelah. Tertiary alcohol with strong oxidizing agent ataupun any oxidizing agent. Apa yang saya akan dapat? 
Kawan sebelah. We talk about this last week. So much. Right, class? What do we get? Aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid. Sorry? No reaction. Why? Sorry? Tertiary alcohol not oxidized. Kenapa sakit? Oh, sebab sakit. Did you see that's your answer? Plus, why? Because the carbon, carbon mana yang tadi H? Alright, nak bagi nama sikit, nak bagi pandai. No reaction. Okay, kita nak pergi kepada no reaction ni terus. Tertiary alcohol that is no reaction, kenapa? Sebab carbon ni tak ada hydrogen, betul? So, macam mana kita nak panggil carbon ni? Anybody can give me the name? Carbinol. Carbon yang pegang OH, kita boleh panggil dia sebagai carbinol. Carbinol carbon. So, why this tertiary alcohol cannot undergo oxidation? Tolong jawab because no hydrogen. Jangan jawab macam tu. No reaction. Why? Because carbinol. Bagi tahu siapa? Because carbinol carbon. Carbon yang pegang OH, carbinol carbon has no hydrogen atom attach. Jangan bagi tahu no hydrogen. Kita takkan terima uh, jawapan tu. Sebab saya ada banyak lagi carbon ni. Dan semua carbon yang lain pegang hydrogen. Betul? Dia je tak pegang. Dia je yang kita nak tengok. So dia tu siapa? Ayat bodoh tu adalah hantu lelah. Carbon that holding OH has no hydrogen. Pun saya terima. Tapi kalau nak tunjuk pandai tu kan. Carbinol carbon. Eh sayang, tak hati nak aja tulis je carbon that have, carbon that holding OH group. Okay? Ah, tak payah nak tunjuk pandai. Kalau dah tak pandai tu tak payah tunjuk lah. Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, this one, nothing much, like we all agree. Okay? So just kind reminder to show you again, apa yang berlaku bila kita ada PCC sekali lagi sayang, kita dah belajar benda ni last week. So apa yang berlaku? Kita kembangkan sedikit carbon yang pegang OH. So carbon yang pegang OH, Dia ada dua H kat sini sebab dia primary. So what happen guys? OH keluar lagi H keluar. OH dengan H keluar ganti dengan apa? Double bond O. Yang saya tak ubah apa tu ada changes? Tak ada. Even hydrogen ke atas akan kekal tapi H dengan OH yang keluar ganti dengan double bond O. That is your aldehyde. Nampak? Simple. Alright. Just want to remind you when we undergo oxidation, ingat ya, when we undergo oxidation, the same carbon need to remove OH, the same carbon need to remove 1H. Sebab kita nak tukar daripada single bond OH jadi double bond. So single bond jadi double bond, kena ada dua orang keluar lah. Dan kamu nak buang siapa? H je lah yang paling kecil, betul? So OH keluar, H keluar, Brambos keluar, ganti dengan double bond O. Nampak? Ingat benda tu. Yang tu oxidation. Okay. Dah. Saya nak lompat sedikit. Saya nak bergerak, bergerak ke reduction. Uh, this is your reaction already. That is your chemical property 9.4. Tapi reduction duduk belakang sikit dalam nota. Tengok sikit kat reduction. Sebab dia oxidation dengan reduction terbalik. Dah cari side. Jumpa. Perkataan reduction. Dah selak selak selak. Jumpa. Yes. With me? Okay, dah ada eh? Okay. Kenapa saya bergerak daripada oxidation, saya nak bergerak terus kepada reduction? Sebab oxidation dengan reduction adalah wise versa. Diorang adalah terbalik antara satu sama lain. Okay? Kalau oxidation, we are going to give oxygen. We are upgrading the oxygen. OH jadi double bond O. Hydrogen jadi OH, betul? That is your oxidation. Kita upgrade daripada hydrogen jadi OH. Daripada OH jadi double bond O. That is oxidation. Reduction bila saya kata terbalik, apa maksud dia? Double bond O jadi OH. OH jadi H. Dan kalau oxidation, kita guna KMNO4. O4. N, uh, Na2Cr2O7. K2Cr2O7. Kenapa O banyak? Sebab kita bagi oksigen. 
oxidation. Looking at your reduction. Kalau oxidation bagi O, what do you think reduction putting in? H. That's why if you look at your reduction, this is the three reagent that we can use. For the reduction, this is tiga reagent yang kita boleh guna. And from that, you can see, we can use hydrogen gas platinum. Kita jarang guna hydrogen gas platinum bukan sebab dia tak elok, bukan sebab dia lemah, tak ada. Tak ada strong, tak ada mau eh, reduction. Reduction tak ada strong, tak ada mau eh. Saya tak, saya tak namakan diorang eh. So, diorang adalah just reducing agent. Kenapa kita jarang guna hydrogen gas? Satu je, sebab hydrogen gas very, very, very explosive. Dia senang terbakar. Dia senang terbakar dan cepat terbakar. So, kita jarang guna. Okay. Dan next, saya ada sodium boron hydride. Sodium NaBH4, boron hydride. Itu nama dia. NaBH4 is in methanol. Kita boleh guna. Nampak the H4? Kita letak hydrogen. Next, nampak tak Roman 1, Roman 2? Sekali lagi. Bila kita ada Roman 1, Roman 2, Roman 1, Roman 2 adalah wajib. It's a follow by. Kalau tadi adalah sodium boron hydride, over here, lithium aluminium hydride. L-I-A-L-H-4. Okay. That is my sodium boron hydride. H4. Kat sini sama, tapi tukar kepada lithium aluminium hydride. Okay. Aluminium hydride. Okay. Follow by H2O, H+. Standard lah, follow by hydrolysis. Okay. Boleh? Semua ni adalah reducing agent. Let's see. Kita nak tengok contoh. Okay. Kalau tadi, okay. Kalau tadi adalah alkohol tukar kepada karbonil. Sekarang saya nak reduce my karbonil. So, saya akan fokus balik kepada karbon yang pegang double bond O. Saya akan fokus balik kepada karbon yang pegang double bond O. Dan let's say I'm using my sodium boron hydride. So, I use NaBH4 in methanol. And obviously, the changes will happen to what I highlighted. Betul? Yes. And what do you think happened to the double bond O? Kalau tadi adalah OH, H keluar, ganti double bond O. Sekarang saya nak terbalik. So, apa jadi pada double bond O? Kita downgrade. Daripada double bond O, downgrade satu jadi single bond OH. Dan next question. Benda yang saya tak highlight, berubah tak? Kita buat apa? Tapi isu besar bila salin balik ni yang salin salah. Macam, hmm, kelas pagi tadi pun dah kena dah dengan saya. Tak tahu berapa kali ketuk tampi dia orang kena. Uh, you're very lucky because I cannot walk to you right now. Okay. So, the changes that only happen is towards the double bond O. And what is the changes? The double bond O becomes single bond OH. And this carbon deserve a new bond. And what do you think the new bond obtain? H. That's why we are calling reduction. Kalau oxidation kita tambah O, reduction kita tambah H. Nampak? Kalau nampak. Pakcik yang duduk kat atas tak tahu uh, siapa dah. Nombor berapa dah tak tahu. Look at my arrow. Can you see Can you see the differences in my arrow? One is going here, one is going here. Pakcik yang duduk kat atas. Tak tahu nombor siapa angkat tangan. Sampai turn siapa? Dari, no, not uh, you, okay? What do we use to uh, to, to change the alcohol back to the carbonyl? Kemeno 4 je. Setuju kelas? Nampak? Nampak the white sosa I meant? Simple. Alright, so the new thing for this carbonyl chapter, one of the new thing for this carbonyl chapter, kita tak pernah belajar reduction lagi. Kita baru jumpa reduction for the first time because this is the only chapter that we start to reduce. So bila kita reduce, apa itu reduction? It's actually another thing of your oxidation. Wise was up. Alright, dia terbalik dengan oxidation. And the same thing apply, boleh saya sambung? The same thing apply to the same ketone that I have over here. And what do you think the changes happen to? C double bond O. 
let's say I'm using lithium aluminium hydride. So I have my followed by Roman 1, lithium aluminium hydride, followed by H2O H plus. And what should I obtain? OH, H, any questions so far? And the only changes is this. Nampak? And the same story, same question. What happened kalau Miss Wong nak patah balik daripada alcohol jadi carbonyl? What do we use? I said CAMNO4 je bila hampa nak pandai we. Alright, K2, Cr2. Easy. Simple. Alright. Easy and simple. Tapi benda baru. Okay. Dah? Okay. Nice. Question so far? Survive? Breathing? Okay. Uh, yang ni saya memang sebab saya letak kalau tak ada apa saya tak nak ajar sebenarnya. Saya nak bagi keyword. Saya nak bagi tips je macam mana kita nak tengok. Saya nak tak nak ajar banyak. Saya nak tengok perubahan yang, saya nak kamu fokus pada perubahan yang berlaku sahaja. Okay. Dalam nota saya, saya ada bagi dua. Tiga my map. Alright. Tiga my map like this. Dua adalah sama. Cuma satu aldehyde, satu keton. Tengok eh. Alright. Yang ni adalah aldehyde punya kan. Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima arrow. Betul? Exactly the same tapi keton. Nampak? Exactly the same eh? So saya tak nak ajar dua kali, saya nak ajar sekali je. Sebab ada benda yang saya nak cerita lagi kat belakang. Uh, tengok betul-betul and kalau ada highlighter boleh highlight. I will have two different color of highlighter and I want to, I want you to focus according to the color. The first and foremost, look at my C double bond O. Sorry lah, I terpaksa letak dia sekali. So it might be a bit small untuk siapa yang duduk belakang. Tapi yang duduk belakang, you don't really bother kan? You all mana kisah sebab tu you duduk belakang kan? Azim boleh nampak? Girls depan boleh nampak? Uh, yang, yang tu no choice masuk lambat kan? I don't really have a choice this one kalau boleh saya nak duduk atas lagi. Keluar belakang tu. Okay. So uh, where we are? So saya nak kamu fokus pada the color coding. First and foremost look at the C double bond O. The C double bond O semua kalau kamu perasan semua ya O5 of them akan jadi OH. Nampak? Semua akan jadi OH. Boleh? Okay. Kalau boleh. Next. Therefore, orang lain kita tengok tak? Kita salin balik je. Macam sama. Kat benzin, kita fokus kat benzin. Kat double bond, kita fokus carbon double bond. Kat alcohol, kita fokus carbon yang pegang OH. Kat halo alkin, kita fokus pada carbon yang pegang halogen. Kat sini, kita fokus carbon yang pegang double bond. Oh. Nampak? Simple. Next step. Fokus pada the changes. Kalau dia adalah nucleophilic addition, bermakna benda yang masuk mesti adalah nucleophile. Dan yang kuning, yang kuning ini, semua adalah nucleophile saya. Nucleophile saya adalah CN. Kenapa CN? Sebab saya tambah K, CN. Betul? OH, kenapa adalah OH? Sebab saya ada H2O, H+. So the H2O, H+, datang daripada OH lah. Okay. So kat sini CN minus is the nucleophile. OH minus is the nucleophile. Nampak? So another kuning yang saya ada kat sini adalah O CH2 CH3. O CH2 CH3. Remember when in alcohol we talk about alcohol tak perlu buang sebagai OH. Alcohol boleh putus kat O dan H. Yes. So your nucleophile adalah CH3 O minus. CH3 CH2 O minus. Nampak? Okay. Same thing. Over here. SO3 and A. So rasa-rasa HSO3 and A, obviously SO3 and A adalah your nucleophile. SO3 and A, the negative bukan duduk kat NA ya sayang. Negative duduk kat S. Okay. So hydrogen yang keluar sebagai H plus lah kat sini. Nampak? Last kat sini. CH2, CH3. Remember your green nut? Your green nut bila putus, that is your CH3, CH2 minus MgCl positive. 
Nampak nuclear file anda? Boleh? Simple. Alright. And the same thing akan apply pada keton. So pada keton saya tak nak cerita dah. Exactly the same yang saya tengok kat sini akan apply exactly the same pada keton. Okay. Sebiji. Cuma kita fokus pada C double bond. Oh so sebelah kanan kiri tu hidrogen ke carbon ke dua carbon sepuluh carbon kita salin je kan? Salin je lah. Alright. Next. Yang ni lagi senang. Apa maksud condensation? Kita akan buang air. Betul? Okay. So sama. Color coding. And dalam condensation like you say, kita kena remove water. So setiap satu dalam reaction ini kena buang air. So how do I remove the water? Obviously, the double bond O, the O from the double bond O and H2. Okay, kita tengok eh. Kalau sekarang saya buang O and H3, saya buang H2. Nampak tak kita buang air? Nampak tak the H2 dah buang tinggal NH? Nampak? Dalam otak kamu kena fikir satu je. I want to remove H2O. And the O coming from the C double bond O. So orang yang duduk kat sebelah kanan, semua yang duduk kat atas arrow, diorang adalah bertanggungjawab untuk buang apa? H2. Bukan H. H2. Betul? So tak percaya. Nampak H2? So nampak tak dia sambungkan N, R. See that? Sekali lagi. Kalau tak percaya. O dah keluar kan? Kat sini dia bertanggungjawab buang OH tak? Tak. Sebab O mesti buang daripada karbonil. So kat sini bertanggungjawab buang H2 and OH. Nampak? Saya tak nak kamu nampak benda ni sebagai lima reaction. Saya nak kamu nampak benda ni sebagai satu reaction. Faham? Because they are the same thing. You remove O, you remove H2. You remove O, you remove H2. Dan apa yang kita tak buang, kita sambung balik. Okay? Same thing. Hydrazine. NH2, NH2. Mana-mana H2 kamu buang pun sama je. Buang satu H2. Dia akan sambung N, NH2. Nampak? N, sama juga. Kat sini saya ada NH2, saya ada NH. Siapa yang akan buang H2? NH2 lah. So saya akan buang NH2. Betul? Dan yang paling penting, I want to highlight one thing. Do you hear just now I say I only remove the O? Did I say I remove the double bond? Do you realize that it's all C double bond N? The double bond remain. The double bond remain. But tadi dengan O, sekarang semua dengan N. So I want to remind one thing. We only remove. Pangka saya hanya adalah pada O. Sebab double bond tak berubah. Faham? Tadi sebelum ni saya akan highlight C double bond O. Betul? Tapi sekarang saya highlight kat O je. Sebab apa? H2O, condensation, buang air. O je yang akan keluar. Dan jangan fikir banyak. O keluar, double bond kekal, N buang H2. Itu je. Jumpa N apa? Sambung kat belakang. CH3, N apa pun. OH, sambung lah apa pun. Tapi N yang pegang lebih daripada satu H, dia pegang dua H, H2 tu kena berambus. Nampak? So I don't want you memorize this thing as five things. It's not five reaction. It's the same reaction. Is that clear? Nampak? Easy. Kimia boleh nampak eh? Alright. Uh, I have only five minutes left. I don't have much time. Uh, therefore, I won't be talking a lot about chemical test. Tapi still nak sentuh chemical test kat sini berbanding dengan alkohol kamu. Uh, sebab alkohol ada dua test je. Dia ada lukis dengan aeroform. Dia tak banyak. Dan dia agak senang untuk kamu nampak. Then, uh, this is the last chapter, not last. This is the second last chapter that we have chemical test for carbonyl. And chemical test in carbonyl take a big part. As you can see, we have four chemical tests. All right, you have a big part chemical test in your carbonyl. Saya jarang cerita sebab saya tahu kamu akan buat dalam amali nanti. Kamu akan belajar dan tutup kamu akan belajar dalam amali. Tapi saya nak ingatkan chemical test in your carbonyl compound is very important because it's a lot of that. So, when... Is a chemical test. I think the very important thing about chemical test is three things. Okay, three things. Setiap kali kamu belajar chemical test, tak kisah chemical test apa. The moment kamu belajar chemical test, you should know three things. The very first, 
what is the function of the test? You know, we always do test. Saya suka buat test. Saya suka buat topik test. Tanya Azim dulu. Betul. Kita suka buat test. And why we are doing test? There is always a reason why you are doing the test. So you need to know the test function. Alright, kenapa saya nak buat uh, Brady test? Kenapa saya nak buat Bromine test? Kenapa saya nak buat Lucas test? Betul? There is always a function and the function will be the one that determine the positive observation. Kalau Brady test is said to identify the presence of carbonyl compound, means saya ada C double bond O. In the other words, saya mungkin ada soalan uh, propanal. Dalam botol saya ada propanal. Dalam botol yang uh, berbeza, saya mungkin ada propanol. Saya ada aldehyde, saya ada alcohol. Dua-dua colorless, saya bagi dalam beaker. Saya tanya kamu, I want to know which one is my aldehyde. That is the function of Brady test. We use Brady test, kita letak dalam tu, and Brady test will give positive observation towards your carbonyl compound. And what is the positive observation? Bright orange precipitate. Okay? And what do we use? Bila kita buat test, dia mesti kena ada recipe. Reagent condition. What do we use? We use 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine. Yang tu adalah benda yang kita guna. Saya tak ada masa nak cerita panjang. Tapi saya nak ingatkan kamu, chemical test is a very big subtopic in your carbonyl compound. Make sure. Uh, basically, dia keluar umur setiap-tiap tahun. Ha, itulah cerita dia. Ha, habis cerita. Dia akan keluar setiap-tiap tahun. So, tolong tahu. Okay, tolong tahu. Alright. Dan dah. Dan uh, semua test kat sini dalam slide saya pun saya memang letak tiga benda ni je. Function, reagent, positive observation. So dalam nota kamu pun ada. Make sure kamu uh, classify dan make sure kamu buat nota pendek untuk test-test ni. Okay. Saya harap Amali kamu akan buat practical test. I really hope that. So that you can see with your eyes what I mean by silver mirror. Okay. What I mean by bright orange precipitate. Kalau saya ada filing test, what I mean by the brick red precipitate form. Saya harap kamu buat dalam lab supaya kamu boleh nampak. Okay? Most likely kita akan buat bermula minggu depan. Dan bila buat tu jangan buat saya saja lah sayang. Buat dan ingatlah apa yang mata hang nampak tu. Okay? Alright? Boleh? Saya tak ada masa lah. I say I have tried so hard. Uh, next week kita akan masuk carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid tak panjang sangat. Yang ni memang panjang sikit so I go very fast today. Okay? Uh, I want to remind you again, all the reactions are very similar. Do not take them as all different. Take them as all similar. Okay? Uh, good luck and all the best. I'll see you again next week for carboxylic acid. Have a good day.